Hi, this is Matthew Robert Bain, and this is Attribute 6 or the sixth chapter of my book, 12 Attributes of the Perfect Christian Life, The Narrow Way. This is attribute number six called prayer. And uh, I'll just start. Prayer is an important function of the Christian life. Many people don't seem to pray as much as they probably should. In this section, we're going to cover prayer as most people know it and also how I do it. A scripture says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. So um, many people uh, understand a formula for prayer. Uh, they understand that uh, you can come to uh, uh, say hello to God, greet God, uh, praise God uh, for uh, what's been going on in your life and then make your request known to God and thank God uh, for answering your prayers. Um, and this verse points at uh, a, a sort of formula. Um, it's important to thank God. I, I find that uh, it's an important uh, function of your relationship with God uh, to be thankful. Uh, uh, I, at the time of recording the videos uh, for what will become this book, I've been uh, in a depression uh, for, for two months um, and uh, I'm in the midst of this depression, but I still thank the Lord uh, for sustaining me and um, it's important, no matter what you're going through, uh, to have a relationship with God where you're thankful. And uh, uh, having thanksgiving uh, in the middle of your prayers uh, will um, make your attitude uh, better. Um, and you could probably agree it, it would be good to be in a good frame of mind and a good attitude uh, when uh, you're praying. Um, be anxious for nothing uh, in this uh, scripture verse reminds me of a saying uh, that I've heard uh, before that says, don't worry, pray. Um, and the saying essentially means if you uh, find yourself worrying about something, well, then you shouldn't be worrying about it. You should be praying about it. Um, and uh, it hints at that, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. So whatever's uh, concerning you, whatever's uh, bringing you uh, discontent, um, that should be a matter of prayer. It's important to pray with faith uh, that you're going to receive when you pray. So many people uh, pray without any faith that they're going to see their prayer answered. Um, so many people uh, have been beaten down by life and just have had such a sorrowful, hard life that uh, they pray for things and they ask for things, uh, but uh, they've got no faith that they're going to receive it because they never seem to uh, go any good. They don't seem to have a good life. And uh, so they don't have faith in their prayer. And uh, Jesus uh, tells us to uh, be thankful to God um, and uh, believe that you're going to receive it uh, in this verse. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you'll receive them and you'll have them. I can use an example of uh, many uh, people have prophesied that I'm going to have an international ministry and 
I'm going to be a popular preacher who's uh, going to speak to multitudes of people. And uh, I've been hearing that for 40 years and it hasn't materialised. And so it can put you into a state of not believing. It can put you into a state of being depressed and sad. And that's uh, one of the reasons why I've been depressed for the last couple of months. Uh, I've entered into a funk. So I can understand uh, someone in my position not even praying for opportunities uh, to speak and not even believing that you're going to have opportunities to speak because it just hasn't happened yet and having no faith to believe it. But um, one way I could pray is as I approach churches uh, to ha have them invite me to speak, that I could pray that uh, certain churches would respond, respond to my letters of recommendation and uh, invite me to speak. And I could pray with faith that God would uh, work on the hearts of the ministers I give the letters to uh, so that uh, they be impressed by the Holy Spirit to invite me to speak. So uh, if uh, I entered that realm with a, a sense of faith that I'm going to receive, then it will happen. And uh, I'm actually doing that as I'm speaking to you. I'm praying that prayer um, uh, to uh, jumpstart my speaking career. One form of prayer is the gift of tongues, which allows the Holy Spirit to pray through you with words you cannot comprehend. This can be very effective, and Romans speaks about that. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings that can't be, cannot be uttered. Um, so that's one uh, form of explanation of what tongue sounds like. Um, some people can have uh, a deep form of groaning uh, in, in accessory prayer, and uh, that can be different to tongues. But uh, some people understand this verse to be describing the gift of tongues. And uh, tongues is very effective. My mother used to pray in tongues and uh, she'd pray for me and she'd pray for half an hour for me every day. And um, I, I feel that a lot of her prayers have been answered even though she's passed on now. Um, I feel today her prayers are still being answered in my life. Certainly um, me uh, being able to leave my addictions behind is an answer to prayer that she would have prayed for a lot. Um, and uh, there's other parts of my life, my righteousness, my holiness, uh, the way that I treat people, the way that I'm living my Christian life, my effectiveness as a minister of the gospel. All of these things are things that my mother would have prayed for uh, when she was praying in tongues. And um, the Holy Spirit uh, actually prays a prayer uh, for you. Um, and, uh, and of course, the Holy Spirit knows how to pray by faith. And so the prayer gets answered. Another verse um, that speaks about tongues is praying all, always with prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to the end with perseverance and supplication and supplication for all the saints. So uh, supplication in the spirit, praying in the spirit. Um, and, uh, and Paul was uh, speaking about um, that uh, people that he was always praying, always with prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. He was praying uh, for all the saints uh, and being led by the spirit to pray for them. And uh, he persevered 
in his praying. Uh, that's another thing. Um, if you're going to pray in tongues, it would be handy to, uh, to pray for a good length of time. And all you need to do as you pray in tongues is change the subject and change the person that you're praying for. Just uh, think of the person's name and then just start to pray in tongues and the Holy Spirit will take over and pray for that person and their need and their potential. And then you change names and pray for that person until you feel an unction that uh, you finished. The tongues is a very effective prayer and something that's uh, really, uh, really beneficial for people to pray in. If you're obeying God and walking righteously, your prayers can be a very effective. Just as Elijah prayed for rain to stop. So the prayer said, uh, the scripture says, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Remember, we said fervent love was a hot form of love. Well, and this is an, the effective fervent, a hot form of prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So in James, it speaks about how Elijah was uh, a righteous man and his prayer stopped the rain in Israel. And uh, so if you're living a righteous and uh, holy life, your prayers can be very effective. And I found uh, personally, uh, when I've been asked to pray for other people, I've been very effective. I had a friend recently that had uh, back pain and uh, I was on the phone for him and I prayed for him and I prayed for an angel to touch him and heal him of his back pain and he felt the angel touch him and his back pain left. And so um, it's because I'm righteous and it's because I have faith that I can pray and have an effective effectiveness uh, and uh, he was taking painkillers for his back and he's a truck driver, so he really needs his back to be in the right condition. And uh, my prayer fixed it. Uh, so um, you can be used effectively in prayer uh, if, uh, if you're righteous and uh, if uh, you're living a holy and obedient life. Uh, your prayers can be very effective. And one component of that that Jesus mentioned that we mentioned before was that you've got to believe that your prayer is going to be effective. One, one part of praying for people's healing is believing that prayer is going to work. You can't just say if it be your will to heal the person, you've got to command the pain to leave and uh, the pain leaves at your command with your authority. Uh, so um, having an effective uh, and powerful prayer life uh, can make you uh, a perfect Christian and uh, have you uh, live on the narrow way, uh, have you uh, affecting people and bringing uh, good fruit uh, with your witness uh, as a Christian. The answer to many of your needs and desires can be found in asking God through prayer and asking and knocking. So Jesus said, so I say, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. Luke 11, 9. So sometimes people are so uh, beaten down, like I said, that uh, they uh, give up having faith and asking for things uh, for themselves. And uh, uh, somehow you've got to get yourself out of that funk and uh, get yourself into a position of faith and ask for things and seek seek and knock uh, for um, for the Lord to open the door or open things for you. 
um, and it really comes down to you. Um, so, so much of prayer comes from intimacy and uh, if you develop your intimacy uh, with the Lord, uh, then uh, prayer uh, will uh, be illuminated and prayer will be more effective. Um, you can have an intimate relationship with God so that when you speak to him, he speaks back and shows you things that are to come. You can have a relationship with God where your prayers don't just go from you to God, but it's called listening prayer where you can listen and God speaks back. Uh, and the verse says, call to me and I will answer you and show, show you great and mighty things which you do not know. So that was Jeremiah 33, 3. So um, God says to Jeremiah, um, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things which uh you don't know and I will answer you, he says. Um, it's possible uh, for people, not just prophets, to hear from God. I've got a book called um, uh, How to Hear from God. Um, and um, uh, uh, it's a book, How God Speaks. Uh, I, I, I don't know the name of the book. I've got 70 books. I can't remember the names of my books, but it's a book about hearing God's voice. And you can look it up and you can find out how to uh, listen to God's voice and how to have two-way conversational prayers with God. Um, Andrew Womack, W-O-M-M-A-C-K, Andrew Womack has a book called A Better Way to Pray. And in that uh, book, he speaks about normal prayer and how there's a more effective kind of prayer uh, where you speak back and forth to each other. Um, and uh, the book is called A Better Way to Pray. And uh, it's very effective uh, prayer. And it's based, essentially the only sort of prayer I have. I just have conversations with Jesus. I just have conversations with God and uh, we discuss things and I, I, the only time I pray like a normal prayer is when someone else asks me to pray for them. But normally I'll just have a conversation with God and a conversation with Jesus and uh, you can grow uh, really intimate with Jesus, uh, having conversations with him every day. And uh, you can grow uh, really close to him and be really effective. But the, the perfect Christian life uh, involves uh, much prayer and um, prayer leads you into relationship and relationship leads you into being a better person and a more effective Christian who's a better light to his community. So um, I pray that uh, you've enjoyed uh, this chapter. And uh, if you liked uh, the video, you can press like.